Are you dealing with a narcissist and you want to know what kind of mind games they play? In this video, I'm going to give you seven of the mind games they play, the most common ones, so that you'll have an insight into their stealthy, sneaky little minds. And that way you'll be able to spot what's going on long before they start to play their little tricks on you. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung and I am an attorney. I'm a narcissist negotiation expert and I help people get out of that cycle of the drama, trauma, and chaos, and into lives of freedom, possibility, purpose, so that you can finally breathe again, so that you can finally feel joy and feel your lives again. Doesn't that seem like amazing? I know right now you're probably feeling hopeless and helpless and paralyzed. I know where you are. I've felt the pain. I've been there myself, not just helping my clients because I have helped them too, but also because I've been there personally. I've dealt with a couple of covert narcissists myself, and that's why I'm on this mission. And that's why I'm here giving you free content every single day. And that's why I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell. And if you are dealing with a narcissist in a negotiation setting, I have a free booklet for you. It will help you if you are negotiating with a narcissist, whether it's in a business setting, workplace, you're dealing with a, a bully in the workplace, you're dealing with it in a divorce setting, a co-parent, toxic parent, grab this. It will help you. Crushmydeal.com. Get it right now. Totally free. All right. Seven mind games played by narcissists. Watch all the way to the end so that you can get all seven. Number one, all narcissists do this. Covert, malignant, grandiose, whatever kind of narcissist it is, you know it, gaslighting. They love this one. They love it. It's their favorite. One of the most common types of games played by the narcissist is Gaslighting, named for the movie or play from the 30s called Gaslight. In that movie, the husband was trying to make the wife think that she was crazy. And so he was blowing out gaslights and she would go, wasn't that just lit? And he'd go, no, no, it wasn't. Trying to make her mind play tricks on her. And that's what gaslighting is. It's a form of psychological manipulation in which the narcissist attempts to make their target or their victim or whatever word you want to use think that they're going insane. You didn't hear what you heard. You didn't see what you saw. The conversation that you thought you had, you didn't have. The thing you think you're seeing, you're not seeing. That's what they do. It, they're trying to make you question your own memories, your own perception of reality, your own sanity at the end of the day. And honestly, when this is happening to you over and over and over again by somebody you are supposed to be able to trust, maybe even love, by somebody who comes at you with authority a lot of times, you do start to question yourself a lot of times. And a lot of times they tie it just enough to reality, just enough to certain events that you start to wonder, wait a minute, am I thinking, wait a minute. You do start to wonder if you're imagining things and you do start to wonder if you're going crazy. And so that's number one is gaslighting. And so you just, you have to start documenting things. You have to start writing things down, start journaling things and start pushing back and start going, no, that's not how it happened. That is not what was said. That is not the way the events took place. Right. That's number one is gaslighting. If you heard it with your ears, if you saw it with your eyes, then that's the way it happened. Trust yourself. Trust your gut. Number two is playing the victim. They like to 
turn things around so that they become the victim, especially if they are under attack for their own behavior. They like to make a lot of noise so that it makes it look like they're the ones who's the victim and you're the one who is the problem. You're the one or somebody else is so that they don't have to be culpable. They don't have to take responsibility then for their own behavior. And that way, somebody else is the one that's causing all of the problems. And they, they even try to make other people feel guilty. And a lot of times it works. A lot of times it works. And, and you know, they can even get marriage counselors to believe that the other person is the problem, third parties, blind monkeys, all kinds of people to believe that other people are the problem. File false allegations, use the court system, get the judges to believe, get the mediators to believe. They can play the victim to all sorts of people. They really can make it seem like somehow they are the victim in the relationship if the other person doesn't somehow change their 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 behavior in some way or do something you know that they're being treated poorly that they're being treated unfairly and 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 it can happen very easily because of course, narcissists are extremely easily slighted. I mean, the wind blows the wrong way and they're easily slighted. It, you know, you can not even slight them. You can say nothing about them. It, it, it can be a conversation that's being had over here. It doesn't even have anything to do with them. And suddenly it's about them. And now they're the victim. They can really cause a lot of trouble in this particular game where they're being the victim, the whole it's not fair thing. They're very good at the it's not fair thing and being the victim. So that's number two. Number three is love bombing. It's another big mind game that they play. And I, you know, this is a very misleading word because there is no love involved in love bombing. It's all about manipulation. It's all about getting you to love them but there's no love happening in the other direction. It's all about getting you to be charmed, to think that there's something special. They make you believe that they think they, you know, you're special, that you're incredible, and that you're the most amazing human being that ever walked the planet, even though they don't think anything of you other than what are you going to eventually be able to do for them? How are you going to be able to make them look? Are you going to be able to give them adulation? Are you going to be able to service them in some way? What are you going to give them? Because they, they want to give you as little as possible. They want to create a, a sense of dependency on, on them just in the sense of they don't want you to have to go outside the relationship for anything else. I mean, they want you to get all of your relationship, you know, needs met in that relationship, except that oddly, they don't want to have to give you anything in that relationship. You're supposed to not go outside the relationship for anything, but you won't get anything from them either. So you just won't get any relationship needs met at all. You're just supposed to serve them. And, and then there's, they're just going to get withdrawals from you. So at the end of the day, you get nothing from anybody and then you're just supposed to serve them. So, and, and, you know, they'll just treat you however they want to treat you. They'll give you as little as possible. You know, they'll be back and forth. And then, you know, if they give you anything at all, then you're supposed to think that you, they're just amazing for doing that for you. I mean, if they give you coffee in the morning, then look at that. I brought you coffee. Look at this. Look how wonderful I am. That sort of thing. So love bombing at the beginning is, is what they do to 
shower affection upon you. And this is a business partnership too. They do the same thing if it's a business partnership as well. In order to gain your trust, in order to kind of groom you, condition you to get you into their world so that they can eventually withdraw that attention and affection and get that back from you, All right? So that's number three. Number four is playing hot and cold. And in this game, this mind game played by the narcissist, they alternate between giving you that attention and affection and love, and then just abruptly shutting it off and ghosting you and not returning texts or not returning calls or not returning any sense of affection or whatever. And they do this to create that feeling of insecurity and anxiety in their victims, in their targets to try to keep you guessing, to try to keep you feeling insecure, to keep you off balance and make you feel confused and make you feel off guard and just to control you because it's sort of evil and maniacal and they kind of get off on it in a way as well. And they will, they want you to come back and they want you to kind of beg and they want you to kind of feel like, oh, you know, please, please, please. You know, and then when you do beg, they, they want to be able to rebuff you and they want to be able to say no and they want to be able to reject you. And, you know, they they enjoy that whole process, too. And then they they enjoy the process of taking you back and and giving you the affection again. And they like that and they, they enjoy the drama of it, too. You know, narcissists enjoy a dramatic relationship. They like all that craziness. They don't like just being even. So that's another mind game that they play is this, this hot and cold. So that's number four. Number five is triangulation. And that is, you know, another name for that is flying monkeys and to third parties. And they try to line up people against you or for them in order to create this divide between you and other people and make you feel bullied. It's a form of bullying. It's to make you feel isolated. It's to make you feel like other people are against you or make you feel like they've got other people for you. And there's so many different ways that they can do this you know, to make you feel like other people are having more important conversations with them or more substantive conversations with them, or what are you talking about with this other person? Or what are you telling this other person? Make you feel like you can't trust other people or make you feel like these other people are on their side or believing their lies and making you feel like no one else is going to believe you. So why bother? Why bother trying to get anybody else to believe your side? All of these kinds of things. And so everyone else thinks this and no one else thinks that. Those are the kinds of things that they do. And it's to make you believe that you shouldn't bother to try to go up against them because it's going to be a waste of time. You know, again, it's a mind game. And a lot of times it's not nearly as bad as you think. And a lot of times the flying monkeys have no idea that they're being used as flying monkeys. By the way, they use judges in this way, counselors in this way, mediators in this way. And all I'm going to tell you is it ain't over till it's over. And I've seen what seems like a foregone conclusion not be a foregone conclusion. So don't think that it's a foregone conclusion unless the end is actually the end. So you never know. You never know. So that's that's that. The next one is discrediting. You know, again, it's it's a similar kind of thing as triangulation, but this one is even like a step further. 
where they play this mind game by actually spreading false allegations, by actually filing false pleadings with the court system, or actually putting things out there on social media, or saying things about the person to coworkers, you know, really spreading things about the person, maybe true or not true, but really trying to discredit the person by saying things that maybe aren't favorable, maybe bringing something up about somebody's past, maybe saying things that might make other people question the person's abilities, question the person's intelligence. And it can be quite damaging at times, especially if it has to do with, you know, their work or their parenting abilities, things like that. Just keep in mind that there are ways to combat that when it comes to work, when it comes to parenting. And again, I, you know, I go back to my slave methodology, strategy, leverage, anticipate, focus on you. Make sure you're documenting. Make sure you have a strong strategy. Make sure you're using your leverage. Make sure that you are using every single possible tool that you have in your hands. There are always ways to get what I call the cream to rise to the top because you can and pivot that, you know? So, you know, step one, don't run. Step two, make a U-turn. Step three, break free. And that's how you write that ship. And that's how you get things to turn around. And that's how you get things to pivot. Don't get things to shift. You don't get the dynamic to shift by running away completely. That is not how you get that dynamic to shift. Remember that narcissists are way more afraid of you than you are of them. You get that dynamic to shift by not running, by turning it all around. Okay. So do not take that bait. And I want you to put that in the comments right now. Don't take the bait. Don't take the bait because you can win. You can turn this around. I've helped many thousands of people do that. I can help you do the same. So don't take the bait. And if you haven't gotten the Crush My Negotiation Prep Worksheet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Get it at crushmydeal.com. And if you are struggling and you need help with therapy, I do have a partnership with BetterHelp. And you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash Rebecca Zung. We do have a partnership with BetterHelp and they do pay us commissions. It doesn't cost you any extra. We just wanted to have a partnership with somebody that we could put out there and say, hey, we are supported by this, you know, this organization. We trust them and we wanted to be able to have something to offer you. So make sure that you get the support that you need. And we also do have a private Facebook group which is Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. So join my free private Facebook group if you want that extra support as well. All right, let's go to the last one. What is the last thing that narcissists do? What is the last mind game that is played by narcissists? This is the one that they all do. And that is triggering you. And this is part of my A in Slay with strategy, leverage, anticipate, and focus on you. Anticipate that they're going to try to trigger you at every turn because they love that. So anticipate that and be two steps ahead of them. That's what I always say. Anything goes when it comes to getting a reaction out of you. They love it. A narcissist's ultimate goal is to control you. And so therefore... Triggering you is a tactic they use to get you to lash out, okay? That's what they want you to do because number one, it gives them supply. Number two, they'll use your emotional reaction against you, right? And so remember that as long as they're getting that supply, they're never going to leave you alone ever. So do not, do not take that bait. As I said, don't allow that. Okay, don't take the bait. They will look for your weak points. They will look for ways. They will look for your Achilles heel. They will strike at it. They're like sharks with blood in the water. They're going to look for ways 
to, to, to strike you. And I do have an entire video on how to keep your cool against narcissists. That is the, the next video that you definitely need to watch. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, then go watch that video, how to keep your cool against narcissists. And remember that today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And then I will see you in that next video, how to keep your cool against narcissists. I will see you there.